What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up. Hey, I uh, have been sitting here for like 10 minutes, just deep in thought. So much on my mind right now. There's just so many things we could talk about. So many topics. You know, it's funny when you start a podcast, people ask you, how do you come up with things to talk about? You know, how do you find people? It's like there is, if, if you're doing any amount of work, any amount of consistent work on yourself, there is so much to talk about for a podcast, like unbelievable. But um, I was thinking I would share with you something that has been on my heart lately because I've been studying a book on faith called How Faith Works by a guy named Frederick Price, I think. Yeah, Frederick Price, recommended to me by a good mentor of mine. And, um, you know, it's not typically from a genre of books I would have been encouraged to read growing up. And, um, you know, I think uh, there's interesting perspective to be gleaned from all sorts of things, but God says to test the spirits to know whether they are from God. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about one of my biggest takeaways from the book. And it's, you know, I have to say it's something that like I've always known, but I don't think I fully knew. I probably still don't fully know to be honest, but I feel like I know it better after reading this book and you know, it's one of those things where scripture is pretty clear on what faith is. And I feel like we we mix words. You know, words are really important. If you think about it, the Bible, what what uh, language is the original Bible? Well, we may not know. I don't know. The, you know, a lot of the oldest texts we go by are in, you know, Old Testament Hebrew, I think, and uh, New Testament Greek. And all the, you know, many of the pastors, most of the pastors, all, all the pastors in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod are taught through seminary. Probably not. Is it all? I think it's probably all. Um, there may be some rare exceptions, but most go through seminary and are taught both Greek and Hebrew. So you can look in those original texts because you, know, you just think about language, right? There's so much that can be lost in translation and there's different ways to translate. You could, you could do literal translation. You can try to translate for meaning. Um, but there's just so many nuances to language. And, um, you know, when it, when it comes to really knowing what faith means, I've always heard this definition. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. You might've heard this in my recent podcast. If you listen to GLE consistently, and if, if you don't, I encourage you to go back and listen to the last couple episodes. And, you know, we touched on this and I just wanted to maybe elaborate more fully. Cause I mentioned it. I was on uh, Daniel Gomez's show recently and uh, I'm not sure when that episode episode is going to be airing, but we touched on it there too. But, just how this book, you know, it really highlighted for me that faith being, and, and this is a definition I've heard all my life, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. One of the staples of the Reformation, faith alone, right? Faith alone, grace alone, scripture alone, faith alone, and Christ alone, right? Um, I just think that... Uh, we oftentimes just take some of these routine Christian things for granted. It's very easy to take them for granted. I'll give you an example. The word amen, amen. We all know what it means, right? What does amen mean? Amen. I bet probably many people don't know what it means, but many do. So, you know, just for those that don't, Amen, I was always taught, means yes, yes, yay, yay, it shall be so. 
so what what exactly does that mean and why would we say that at the end of a prayer and um you know the bible has so many good examples and and again i encourage you to pick up this book and and test the spirits right like i'm, I'm not saying i agree 100% with everything in the book per se but it it definitely had some things that made me think about just how maybe my faith has been lacking in certain ways and you know when you think about amen yay yay yes yes it shall be so well it, what shall is that future tense I kind of think of shall as future tense, but, you know, you think of God being Yahweh, I am, you know, God's always present tense. He's, he was and is and is to come, right? And um, shall ever shall be, right? World without end. Amen. So what does yeah, yeah, it shall be so mean? Does that mean it, it, sh it will be so at some point in the future? Does that mean it's so now? Does that mean it was so? What does amen mean? Does it mean, you know, it, it, it could also be translated, yes, I believe it, right? I believe what I just prayed. I believe that I will receive what I just prayed. Well, why would we believe what we receive what we pray for. Why, why would we believe that? Well, we trust in God's promises, right? He, he makes good on his promises. And one of his promises is to give us the desires of our heart. And I'll let you study and, and seek that out yourself. But so what does that mean? Does that mean, you know, he's just going to give us evil things well i you know i he he gives according to his word and will one if we are in alignment with his word and will then we will ask according to his word and will but it does say he will give us the desires of our heart and so you know when when does he give those to us well we, there's an interesting conundrum, right? I mentioned I am, Yahweh, was and is and is to come, ever shall be. You know, I think uh, we sometimes lose that God operates in an eternal environment outside of time, right? So we're living in this time world, and... We go to God in prayer, and here's the here's the deal. You know, you go in faith, and faith always acts according to what it clings to, what it believes, right? So if I go to God in prayer, and he promises to give me the desires of my heart, and... I believe that he will give me those desires because he promises to. Well, then once I pray it, if I don't doubt his word and his promise, then I would act as if those things were already given to me. Right? What I prayed for already happened. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't necessarily sit and, you know, I was pondering this too, vain repetitious prayers, right? We hear about what is vain repetition. I've always thought of it as, you know, just saying the rosary 10 times over and over or whatever, right? Vain repetition. What is vain repetition? I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm clear on what vain repetitious prayers are. You know, I've met people that you know, they don't say the Lord's prayer over and over again. Right. Cause they think it's vain repetitious prayer. Um, so what, what is really meant by vain repetitious prayer? Does it, or could it mean that you are continually asking for the same thing over and over again, because you don't believe that you have already received it. 
right? So you pray to God. And if you, I mean, he says he'll give you the desires of your heart. Anything you ask in his name, he'll grant you. If you have faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. He doesn't say when, he doesn't say how. But if you believe his word's true, if you have the faith of just a mustard seed, a little tiny mustard seed, right? So what is this faith? Well, faith acts according to what it believes. God's promises say he'll give you the desires of your heart right? Do you believe that? If so, do you receive it? Even though you can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, you can't smell it yet, you can't hear it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what is the evidence of the things not seen? that you can't see and feel and touch that you've already prayed for that, you know, you're going to get the evidence is faith. So I know this is kind of a nuanced, strange topic to be speaking on. It's been on my heart a lot recently. So it's come up in my conversations recently. Just, I want you to seek this out, really seek out this faith topic because faith alone in Christ alone saves, right? And there were, uh, you know, you think of Jesus in the crowd. All these people were touching Jesus, right? And then the woman believes, if I just touch him, I'll be healed. And what happened? Jesus felt power leave him. And he turns around, who touched me? What does he say to her? Your faith made you well. Right? Right? But she believed and she acted, reached out and grabbed his cloak according to her belief. Right? There's there's um there's so much nuance to this faith topic that personally I've never delved into until reading this book. And like I said at the beginning, it's not that I didn't believe it before. Maybe it was just a little doubt. Maybe it was unbelief. Maybe it was, I, I don't know. Maybe it was uh, trickery, maybe, you know, programming from my youth. I don't know. But it's it's kind of just got me thinking about ways where I've been confessing things, amen, my whole life. And maybe I didn't fully grasp exactly what I was doing or what it even meant, right? And why would I if I believe I've received something, continually pray for it over and over and over again. Why wouldn't I give thanks that he will do what we've asked of him as we patiently await for those to come to our senses? Is asking for the same thing over and over again showing a lack of faith? I don't know. We have a merciful God who loves us, sent his son to die for us, gave us access to the Father. And there's a lot of promises of God in the Bible. And so I encourage you today to seek out, seek and you will find those promises. Cling to those promises. And as you go, lead everything.